Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, we're a few minutes behind. Again, good afternoon. Wonderful to see so many familiar faces again. Today, it is my great pleasure to announce Assemblywoman Marlene Curide of Ridgefield as New Jersey's next commissioner of the Department of Banking and Insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a particular treat uh, for me, and I think for all of us, most importantly, Marlene, that her mom and dad are with us, her sister-in-law is with us. Your brother would be here, but he's a medical doctor and Correct. had his appointments, and your chief of staff are all here in the front row sitting alongside my wife and daughter. So it's a family affair. Since 2012, Marlene has served the residents of Bergen and Passaic counties with distinction in the General Assembly, sitting on the Assembly Financial Institutions and Insurance Committee, as well as on the Appropriations Committee, and importantly as Chairwoman of the Education Committee. Marlene understands how government works and the importance of government having the backs of the residents it serves. I think you can leave that open, Rob, if you want. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. She knows that we must ensure fairness to consumers and ensure our small businesses have the means to grow, create jobs, and strengthen our economy. She has sponsored and supported legislation to expand insurance coverage for both fertility treatments and contraceptives, to protect flood insurance policyholders, and to expand consumer protections, to name just a few. Her career is a lifelong testament to public service. Marlene has been a municipal prosecutor and served as a locally appointed official. She has provided pro bono legal counsel to women on matters related to domestic violence and spousal and child support. And as a real estate attorney, she's ensured that consumers are treated fairly by mortgage companies in the purchases of their homes. Standing up for consumers and ensuring they have a fair deal, especially where their insurance or the safety of their saving, savings are concerned, is a key element for any banking and insurance commissioner. This is especially important now with the efforts underway to undermine and even begin to dismantle both the Affordable Care Act and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Marlene knows this because she's been watching some of our appointments. We keep coming back to a similar theme uh, every time we're in this room, and that is the destruction that's coming at us from Washington and the disassembling of the Affordable Care Act and the neutering uh, of the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau are two fresh examples today um, that we can refer to. As Washington moves away, and let there be no doubt it is moving away from protecting consumers, it will fall to states to pick up what they have dropped. I and we, and I say we again, Sheila Oliver, our lieutenant governor-elect, is with us in spirit today, will look to Marlene to ensure that our insurance companies serve the needs of our residents, not the wants of their executives, and that our banking sector serves Main Street and not Wall Street. New Jerseyans need a watchdog at the Department of Banking and Insurance to look out for them, to ensure their health insurance policy is worth the paper it's printed on, to ensure the banks where they save for their futures or where our small businesses go to grow our economy are stable and viable, and to have their backs when they make the most important and largest purchase in their lives a home. Marlene Caride will be that watchdog. And yes, we will ask Marlene to help us in the effort to establish a public bank for the state of New Jersey, to bring home the billions of taxpayer dollars we currently invest in Wall Street banks or in foreign banks or in short-term commercial paper and companies that don't even reinvest one dime in New Jersey, so that we can invest in our communities, our small businesses, and our college students. Upon her confirmation, and this is another point of particular pride, by the Senate, which we do not ever take uh, uh, presumptively, 
Marlene would be the first person of Hispanic heritage to serve as the Commissioner of Banking and Insurance. I am honored, we are honored, that she will be joining our cabinet, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the next Commissioner of Banking and Insurance, Assemblywoman Marlene Curide. Those days are over. Good afternoon, everyone. I am humbled and I am proud of the friendship and the trust that our governor elect Murphy has placed in me. I think that when we spoke yesterday, it was very clear how excited I was to be able to work with a man that I admire. So, Governor, thank you so much for your confidence. Thank you so much. Six years ago when I ran for the assembly, I did so because I wanted to give back to my community and serve as a role model. See, I was raised by my parents who taught us that through hard work and studying, you could always reach your goals. And I wanted the children of District 36 to know that if I could reach my dreams as an attorney, as an assemblywoman, as the chair of education, and as the commissioner of banking and insurance, they too would be able to reach their goals. For me, my role models have always been my parents. Um, they left Cuba knowing that they would not be able to go back. They left everything that they knew, they left everyone that they knew, and they started a life here. They didn't know the language, and at times things were tough. But despite that, and their story is very similar to other individuals that come to this country, Despite that, they held two jobs, three jobs, learned the language, started a business, purchased a home, sent my brother to medical school, and sent me to law school. So they are the perfect example of the American dream. And that is what we are here to do, to make sure that every resident of New Jersey can accomplish the goal of the American dream. I want to thank my parents today for teaching me and for supporting me, and best of all, for teaching me that being a woman and a Latina is not a disadvantage. On the contrary, it is an advantage. And that is what I hope to share with everyone. Unfortunately, my brother could not be here due to his medical practice, but my sister-in-law is here, and my friend and chief of staff who has worked so hard with me during these last six years, Catherine Suarez. As a small business owner, I know how difficult it is to expand a business during a weak economy. I also know how hard it is and difficult it is to grow a business without the necessary financial backing that sometimes lenders do not want to provide to small businesses. We need to encourage our small businesses to grow and we need to provide them with the tools to grow. I've seen our real estate market boom and I've seen our real estate market crash due to bad lending practices. Foreclosures in New Jersey are at its highest. I think we're second to the state of Florida. And our residents are left to pick up the pieces and sometimes out on the street. I see what's happening in Washington with regards to our health care, and that worries me. And we need to make sure as a state that we are prepared to help our residents should the Affordable Care Act be repealed or severely crippled. I have heard distressing stories while on my committee about bills that consumers receive from their doctors and their hospitals because they're out of network. And these bills are outrageous, causing these individuals to sometimes have to spend their whole life savings to pay off these bills and at times to file bankruptcy. This is not fair. It's not fair to them, and it's not fair to the state of New Jersey. And it's my job, or it will be my job, to ensure that New Jersey consumers are treated fairly not only by our lending institutions, but by our insurance companies. I am pleased and honored to have the opportunity to work with our governor-elect on establishing a public bank. Um, this, to me, is a wonderful idea that will help to grow the economy of New Jersey. 
It will help to support our small businesses. It will help our college students obtain loans at a lower interest level. And it will help us to fund projects, small infrastructure projects in this state. It can be done. It has been done. It has been done. And I know that we can use a role model from North Dakota and take what's best and what's worked well over there to implement it here in New Jersey. I look forward to this new chapter in my life, and I'm excited about the challenges ahead. I know that this state is in good hands with Governor-elect Murphy, and I intend to work hard to ensure that the people of New Jersey have confidence in our banking and insurance institution. <laughs> Lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Senator Sarlo and Assemblyman Scher. We have worked as a team for District 36, and we have accomplished much together. So I want to thank them for opening the doors for me to be able to reach this particular goal. If you will humor me just for a few minutes, I just want to say a few words in Spanish. Le quiero dar las gracias a nuestro gobernador electo, Murphy, por su confianza y su amistad. Me ha dado una oportunidad de trabajar en este estado en un, en un capítulo diferente en mi vida en una administración que yo sé que va a hacer todo posible para poder cambiar la dirección del estado de New Jersey. Es hora que nosotros nos concentremos en nuestros residentes de New Jersey. Es hora que nosotros nos concentremos en lo que es mejor para New Jersey. Y yo sé que en las manos de nuestro gobernador electo estamos en un buen camino. Gracias. Thank you. can't resist. Que Dios te bendiga. <laughs> <laughs> I just said to Marlene probably I can't resist. Your, your Spanish is outstanding. <laughs> um, time for a couple of questions. I said this yesterday, by the way, and I, I, I meant it. And, and the fact that we're here is proof that I meant it, that we don't think this is the last opportunity we'll be together this week. We're still trying to get our ducks in a row. We've got moving pieces that some of which are within our control and some of which are outside of our control. So please bear with us. I think the chances are very high we'll be together again. Please. Governor-elect, where do you stand with the 2% wage cap for firefighters and police in New Jersey? Well, I saw what the Senate president said yesterday, uh, uh, and I agree with him. You know, we, we've, we've been saying this for quite some time. We want to make decisions based on the facts. Uh, there's a report that's due this month. The clock is ticking. We would welcome a, by the way, not just half the report or half the commission delivering the report as they did a couple of months ago, uh, but everybody. I, I said at that time I chaired a very uh, tough commission on pension and health care benefits in 2005, and it was not easy to get to a unified report. Mm -hmm. We did. Um, I would hope we can get the same result here. Uh, I'd also repeat what I've been saying for months, that there are good arguments on both sides. We hear from mayors, uh, more Democrats than not. Pete Camerano just uh, stepped down as Mayor Metuchen as a good example. Uh, they've got good arguments. First responders have good arguments. Um, we're looking forward to, to, to seeing that and making the decisions based on fact. David, you had something? Uh, are, are you in favor of this subsidy for uh, CFP and D? Well, it's a bigger question, David. Um, we have no question whatsoever about the uh, objective here, which is to keep, assuming they're operated safely, to keep these nuclear plants, and I'm putting Oyster Creek to the side, by the way, which needs to be wound down in a way that's responsible and safe and respects the ecology in Barnegat Bay and all of the re issues that go with clean water. But the ones that have the, uh, have the useful life that's going to go out uh, several more decades, we are all in 100 percent to keep them uh, going to the last day, assuming they're run responsibly. They employ both directly and indirectly thousands of people. Uh, in the southern part of the state. There's no question about that. And they are the biggest bridge we've got to the 100% clean energy future. What we don't want to do, and this bill, I guess, was dropped late Thursday night. I was in Puerto Rico. I've been back for a couple of days. We don't want to accomplish that at the expense of, the, uh, of developing the green alternative energy economy, which we must desperately develop aggressively alongside that bridge. So we're still, we're still trying to look at the, there's no question about the what. We're looking at the how. Anybody else? Really question, no, that's that's I, I, I'll stand with that, Matt. Senator, uh, a colleague uh, published a story a couple of days ago about uh, teachers accused of sexual misconduct being able to find employment at other schools, uh, and there was.
there's legislation right now that goes forward passing that tracks legislation. Is that something that could be is that something that can get passed? Honestly, I read the article, but I haven't seen the legislation, but I was disgusted by it. Um, so if it's smart legislation that prevents that from happening, uh, count me in. But again, note that I haven't, I haven't read the legislation, but I vomited when I read the article. Matt. Uh, Assemblywoman um, just yesterday in committee, you voted to keep the retirement benefits um, for some career politicians without any idea how many people would be affected or how much this is going to cost. What does that say about the way that the process or the voting for this one could really make this happen again? And um, Governor Mike, I'd like to know how you feel about this bill as well. Well, if I may, you know, based on the research that we had for the bill yesterday, it was to clean, it was to correct the intent that of that bill from when it was first um, passed to help the individuals that were already in the pension plan to continue in the pension plan. Um, it will affect a small hand, a small number of individuals that were in the assembly uh, and then passed on to the Senate or vice versa. And it will also help a small hand of uh, a small group of council members that may have ended their position locally and then had gone to the county. I, I don't know the bill per se. Uh, I'll just raise my hand again as the guy who chaired the original commission. The state's got to own up to its obligations. Uh, folks have to get to back to trusting our state and our pension, and our pension moves speak volumes uh, about our ability to regain that trust. Maybe do one more. Is it appropriate to add politicians to the pension system at this time when the pension is such in dire shape and? Public workers have been asked to take reports. Is it appropriate to add elected officials? I, I haven't. I, I haven't looked at the specific yeah. specifics of it. The bigger picture is we need to get to a better place on pensions. We can ask one more. Uh, yeah, Assemblywoman, are you willing to put a couple of significant projects on the horizon? Talk through some threats with the Affordable Care Act. Um, could you just give us a little bit more uh, insight on your experience with any of these industries and specifically with like the public bank? You don't come from a banking background, as far no, as no, I don't. Know. I don't. I don't come from a banking background. However, I am a consumer. I am an attorney who handles real estate matters that deal directly with mortgage companies. I dealt with short sales that have to deal directly with the mortgage companies and foreclosures. Um, in my practice, I did personal injury, so I've dealt with the insurance companies from those angles. So I've been a consumer, and I've dealt in the side of representing policyholders with the insurance companies. I'll make two quick comments as we break, actually three. Uh, number one, the, the public bank piece in particular is a common sense uh, policy. This is not doctoral calculus. It's all the tax money or virtually all the tax money that gets ra raised at the state level until it's paid out and expenses leaves the state, none of it comes back to work in New Jersey. This is a vehicle to keep that money in the state to be lent into the state. It's not, it's not uh, as I said, doctoral calculus. Secondly, um, bear with us, Dan. I assume you'll be the one who will let us know if we're able to reconvene this week. Um, and I'm, I'm highly confident we will. Thirdly, I'm very disappointed no one asked me about the federal tax bill, so I just want to get this off my chest. Uh, so tell Molshine or anyone else who wasn't here who would have wanted me to ask me about this. I just was given a statistic uh, walking down here. According to Paul Krugman, 83% of the benefit of this federal tax bill, when all is said and done, will go to the top 1% in this country. Enough said. Thank you all very much. Thank you. You want to give us some more answers and we'll make up the questions as we go? <laughs> You can stay for a little.